time for another episode of Curbside Consult, where I run the streets of New York City answering your medical questions. Huge thanks to NRC Health for sponsoring this video. Now, who has some medical questions? The general medical questions, what do you got from me? I broke my arm. I just said no individual um, questions. This was sort of the test. <laughs> oh, gosh. There's just so much I could ask. You gotta, you gotta give me a second. Oh, take your time. Excuse me, sir, do you have a medical question? Come out of the bike lane, don't get hurt. What made you want to take a scooter today? The reason is uh, to be very fast. My one piece of advice would be to wear a helmet. Cars here are crazy. Yes, of course. <laughs> but we are not so fast. <laughs> My uh, second worst fear, uh, besides apples, of course, is healing gemstones. Healing gemstones apparently fix everything that's wrong with you, so you gotta be careful. Apparently we came on a healthy day to Union Square. There's healthy vegetables, I love it. How do doctors deal with um, patients with sickle cell? Mind you, I have sickle cell. Okay, that's a good question. When we have a patient who has a history of sickle cell crises, have you had them? Yes. Okay, sickle cell crisis, we wanna prevent that as much as possible by getting people comfortable and decreasing their risk by making sure they're taking appropriate medications to make sure that they have a crisis plan in place, but also to make sure that they have a primary care doctor. So do you have a primary care doctor? Yes. Okay, do you have a good relationship? Yes. If you had to change one thing about our healthcare system and heal the healthcare system, what would you change? Probably more doctors that actually would support a dream that a patient would have despite their disabilities. Amazing. The only way a doctor can do that is if they first understand you as a human as opposed to just a patient or a number, right? Yes. What gets lost in our healthcare system is the doctor-patient relationship. Folks just don't feel seen or heard. This is why my mission aligns so well with NRC Health. They help doctors and healthcare systems better understand their patients as individuals and how patients feel seen and heard. They're just improving the overall patient experience. Is it true that you can outgrow allergies and asthma? Yes. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I can actually give you a very specific example of how people outgrow allergies. You've heard of the antibiotic called penicillin? Yes. Okay, penicillin allergy is quite common, and a lot of my patients come in and say that they have a penicillin allergy. But most of the time, they're referencing what happened to them in their youth. And 90% of people who state that they have a penicillin allergy have either grown out of it or never had one to begin with. What? <laughs> All right, we're gonna answer some of your questions. Uh, first question, what does the uvula do? That thing that dangles at the back of your throat, as someone wise once said. It actually, we, we don't even have a great answer to what the uvula does. For now, we think it has something to do with secretion of saliva to aid in eating and drinking. It also blocks food and liquids from going up into your nose, so it acts as a mechanical barrier. So thank you, uvula. Is there anything you've seen from like TikTok or heard from your friends that people are like, here's health advice, and you're like, is that true? I get my TikToks from you. <laughs> and so you're currently busting them as I hear them. Okay, okay, hold on a second. We got a Knicks fan. What's up? I'm not a Knicks fan. <laughs> How are you going to wear a Knicks jersey? When your ankle sprained, what's the muscle that's usually mostly sprained? Usually when you sprain an ankle, it's not a muscle, but it's a ligament. And it's called the anterior talofibular ligament. And you know what the shorthand version of it is? ATF, anterior talofibular. And you know what ATF also stands for? What? Always torn first. Oh. What's the most commonly sprained ankle ligament? ATF. Or? Don't remember the <laughs> name. Why does helium make your voice sound funny? I've always wondered that before I became a doctor. And the answer is because helium is lower density than oxygen. So think about it, we put helium in balloons, so they're lower density, they float. But when you inhale and then exhale the helium, you're having lower density, so therefore sound travels faster than them, resulting in a high-pitched squeaky voice. Okay. I knew New Yorkers were excited about healthcare questions, but even the building has a question. And the answer is? Mostly water. What is something that you can tell those who have ADHD to just simply help regulate some of the fuzziness we feel in our brains? Stay very, very far away from TikTok. <laughs> There's actually been legitimate medical research done that shows the advice that's given online, specifically surrounding ADHD, that was what the paper was on, that most of it, most of it is inaccurate. Wow. 
been seeing a lot of like on the TikTok shop mushrooms. See, that, that's what I try and stand against because I think how you go about treating ADHD is going to be an individualized plan. You're going to need to meet with your doctor, maybe even your psychiatrist. That's how you make the diagnosis. That's how you decide what works for you as an individual. And it's not going to be what TikTok is selling. Perfect. Thank you, doctor. Any tips on how to maintain your poofiness? Why does squinting help you see better? Well, the answer comes from your pupil. When you squint, you decrease the amount of rays that are going through the top and bottom of the pupil. Therefore, they're going through the center, hitting the lens more readily, so you get a sharper image. See what I'm saying? One question I have for you. Uh, do you think your doctor spends enough time with you? No, <laughs> I don't think so. How much time face-to-face -face, do you actually get with a doctor on average? Probably like eight minutes. That's terrible, no? <laughs> Not that much, yeah. I went to one place where they just uh, took one look at me and were like, no, we deal with strep throat and stubbed toes. Look, clearly people want doctors to treat them as humans. That makes sense. But you can't do that in 10 minutes without some kind of preparation. That's why I love that NRC Health thinks before the visit, during the visit, after the visit, about improving the patient experience. It's about humanizing it. We're not aggregates or averages. We're humans that want good healthcare. We truly just want a doctor to sit down and listen to us. Why does leather make us sweaty? Well, when you sit on leather, A, you're not getting good circulation because there's pressure on there, but also leather tends to reflect the temperature of the surroundings. So if your skin's warm, the leather's gonna get warm and not allow you to cool down. Also, leather is incredibly dense, so you're not getting good air circulation, therefore not allowing your skin to cool. Now you have it. Answering medical questions on the street, I'm a real doctor. Oh, wow, I'm a real nurse. Oh, okay, so you don't have any medical questions. I mean, I have tons of medical questions. Really, okay, yeah, come on, I have I can't one. think of one on the spot. Welcome to my fake office here. Oh in the midst of the bike stuff. Sorry, sorry, please. Okay, so is eating vegan actually good for you? Oh, okay. You can eat a healthy vegan diet and it'd be totally appropriate for all stages of life. If you consume animal products, that does not make it unhealthy. But those animal products should be monitored, meaning that if you're eating high amounts of processed foods, like the cold cuts, the hot dogs, those are not the healthiest foods to eat. There are some individuals that maybe a vegan diet could be good for. Like if you have high amounts of plaque in your arteries, when you consume animal products, you get high amounts of saturated fat in your diet. That can make the problem worse. But if a patient walks in and says, should I be vegan? Too? Is that the only healthy diet? The answer is no. Okay, we got another question. If I consume wine, will I live longer? Unfortunately, this is not how it works. There's this whole thing about a French paradox. Back in the day, there was a study that people who live in France live longer, and it was assumed based on their lifestyle that the fact that they drank wine was what extended their life. But we've tested this time and time again, and that just happens to not be true. All right, come on in, come on in. I don't fight, I promise. Let me see you through a screen. Yeah. Well, well, now, yes. now I just jumped out of the screen. I'm vegetarian. Okay. Supplement recommendations? I never make individual recommendations on the street, but for my patients that are vegetarian or vegan, I want to make sure that they're supplementing with their B vitamins, specifically B12, because that's something that's not found outside of animal products. Second is protein. It's very easy to not consume adequate amounts of protein, therefore or not support healthy muscle growth. And if you don't have healthy muscle growth, that actually decreases how many calories you use per day, which makes it harder to lose weight or to be strong. So that's what I try and recommend to them. Is it true that we have a doctor here? Yes. Oh my God. What kind of doctor are you? Uh, ER physician. Oh my God. So we're only gonna get 10 seconds to spend with you. Okay. I can give you more. I'm, I'm willing. What do you hear from people in terms of, on average, how much time they get to spend with a doctor face to face? Oh, it's very little. I mean, I, I have to go from examples. My parents, um, they had this fantastic uh, primary care physician uh, that they loved. He spent all the time in the world with them. I actually used to go to see him. He would spend 30, 45 minutes in a visit with you. But unfortunately, now he does concierge medicine because that's the only way that he's going to get the money back for the time that he spends. So now they have to go see another doctor who kind of just does labs. Just basically, hi, how are you doing? Here, let me check all the labs that need to be done. And that's how I'm going to base all my uh, thought process, not really an interaction and a talk with you sort of thing. So yeah, that's... 
Terrible. I'm sorry they're going through that, but that's exactly what we're trying to fix with today's video. What the doctor said is exactly right. You can't make a proper assessment plan when you're seeing a patient for such a short amount of time. You can't just look at numbers. You have to look at the person. You have to know who that person is. That's why I'm so proud to be working with NRC Health because they really focus on not just what happens after the visit, but before the visit to make sure you're getting the most of that limited time. So I've been told, I've heard, and I've done this before, taking charcoal pills helps with alcohol digestion. Is this true? The way that I think about it is you can't cheat a hangover. Because when we think of hangovers, a lot of people think it's just the alcohol that's playing the role. And while it is alcohol, it's irritating your stomach, your gastric mucosa, the basically the lining of the stomach gets irritated when we drink alcohol, but it really affects the whole body. Because what else happens when you're uh, over drinking alcohol? You're not sleeping well, so your circadian rhythm is fully thrown off. You're you're not hydrating well usually because alcohol acts as a diuretic, so you're urinating a lot and not hydrating. You're usually consuming unhealthy food choices that you normally don't consume. So because you're making all these bad choices at once, that's what's contributing to the hangover, not just the alcohol. That's why I think promising people that if you just take this pill, it's gonna help it. It doesn't exist, there is no hangover pill. Charcoal is not gonna be the miracle solution. The miracle solution is learning the self-discipline of when to say no or when to stop. Here are some bizarre facts from every medical specialty. Huge thanks to NRC Health for sponsoring this video. Let's heal the system and humanize healthcare together. As always, stay happy and healthy.